Hey now, it's Rob here from Rob School of Music, and on today's podcast, we have the unreal Tim Stewart, lead guitar player for Lady Gaga, American Idol, and so many other amazing things. Check it out on the other side. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another epic podcast here. My name is Rob, as always, coming to you live from Rob's School of Music at our physical store here in Suffern, New York. We're teaching worldwide online music lessons, guitar, bass, drums, voice, piano, and we have some amazing online courses we will be launching in the coming weeks. Today on the podcast, I am honored to have an amazing conversation with Tim Stewart, Tim Stewart is currently the lead guitar player for Lady Gaga. He's been with her for the past several years. But prior to that, this guy's resume is amazing. He is the dude who shreds behind so many amazing pop artists. Jessica Simpson, Rihanna, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, Omarion, 50 Cent. It goes on and on, the people he has worked with. Really nice guy, great conversation we had. He's uh, As soon as we finished our conversation, he was going to be tracking some guitar for this current season of American Idol, which is obviously being done all remotely, but he is also the guitar player for that show. Personally, for me, as a guy who came up playing hard rock music, phased my way into the pop scene doing the covers and things like that, the opportunity to play electric guitar and acoustic guitar in these pop settings, I think, is a really, really cool gig to have every night you show up and these artists are pulling packed houses, arenas, stadiums. He played at the Super Bowl um, and the fans are just so passionate about the music. So as a guy who just loves to play music, I think that this is a really cool gig and I felt very honored to be able to have such a great conversation with him. Before we jump in, just wanted to do some housekeeping. Today's show and all of our shows is sponsored by Rob School of Music, Music Lessons. You can check us out at robschoolofmusic.com. We have teachers who play guitar, bass, drums, piano, voice. We can teach all ages, all skill levels, and take you wherever you want to go. This is a sort of choose-your-own-destiny format, private lesson, either online or in person. Later this month, we'll be also launching a subscription-based program with more of a guided education format, but more on that later. Every Wednesday, we do Instagram Live interviews with some of the greatest and most amazing musicians. We have upcoming Mark Letiri, Tim Pierce, Rudy Sarzo, Bruce Kulick, Jared Scharf, Andy Timmons, YouTube sensation Jude Smith. The list goes on. We are booked out into the middle of the summer. And of course, we turn every Instagram interview into a podcast so you can listen to it even if you don't get to catch us live. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate all the love and support. Here we go. My conversation with Tim Stewart. Rob, what's going on, man? What's up, brother? Thank you so much for your time. Oh, yeah, no worries. How goes it? It goes as well as it can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. We're making do. We're over here in New York, so we, we got creamed pretty hard with this whole thing. I'm just going to jump in real fast here. Sorry, guys. The audio over the Instagram live sometimes was having some buffering issues, so it's not the best quality, but you definitely can get the idea of what we're talking about. I apologize for that, but please enjoy. A nice distraction from everyone, so thank you so much for your time tonight. Hey, no worries, man. I'm glad to do it. Definitely. Cool, man. All right, so I'm going to... Well, this thing will start populating as, as we go, but I'm just start asking you some questions and then just, you know, feel free to jump off on tangents. And if we only get one question answered, but it's a cool hour long story, I'm totally cool with that. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. For um, sure. All right, dude. So the, the number one question we're getting from everyone is, uh, what, what was your best and worst experience of all the different things and we'll get into you you know who you are and what you do but i guess this will kind of segue into that nicely wow best and worst experience yeah <laughs> or any as far as playing? <laughs> yeah like like uh i guess like has anything terribly gone wrong gear wise or you know an amazing crowd somewhere something that sticks out one way or the other uh yeah i mean i've, I've definitely been fortunate to do some really um 
amazing, amazing, you know, shows or, I don't know, man, they, I'm, I'm, we, I'm super happy to be playing at any point. So I kind of feel the same thrill generally wherever I'm playing, <laughs> but I, you know, certain things are, are, are special, you know, at the Super Bowl and we did Coachella and, um, to honestly, like little club shows with my own band. That's, that's exciting to me, man. I'm, you know, I'm just happy to be playing. I don't know. Cool. But yeah, I, I definitely have had some trippy gigs like we all have throughout my life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it's actually really cool to hear you say that, though, because, you know, to go from something as epic as the Super Bowl to, you know, smaller club dates and still be incredibly humble and happy to be doing all of them, that's, I think, the perfect perspective, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at it that way. Um, I mean, you don't have to look at it that way. I think it's just, it is that way. You know what I mean? Right. I think you need to play music, and it's all about the interaction with the other people you're playing with and the audience and you sharing your, your gift, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing, man. I think about when I was young, just playing in my room or like I am now, just I'm super thankful to be able to play, man, honestly. Cool. No, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. Definitely. Um, what was your journey? When did you start playing? Man, I started when I was about 12, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in that range. Um, I was pretty much surrounded by music, you know, my dad plays. My sister was super into music and uh, my cousins and growing up in church as well. So, you know, it was just a lot of music around me. And, uh, but I caught the bug pretty much around that time, around 12, 13. And then that was just super diehard, man, <laughs> over the top, you know, spent all my hours in my room practicing and listening and watching VH tape, VHS tapes and hot licks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I try and like, I, you know, we're a music school. So anyone watching, we're a music school. We have a brick and mortar school we teach out of here. Um, and now we've moved everything obviously online, which has kind of been a blessing in disguise because now we get to teach people all around the country and that's been really cool. But a lot of these younger students, I try and explain to them, you know, if you're a guitar player, when I was starting out, you had to, if you wanted to learn a song, you couldn't go on the internet and, and look up tabs and stuff. You had to tape it off there, find it on the radio tape it, be lucky enough not to have the DJ talk over the super cool riff in the beginning <laughs> and then pick it apart with your ear. Like, yeah. kids don't have to struggle, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird, man. I, cause you know, my daughter plays, my daughter is 16 and she's killing playing guitar, but nice. I, I just, the resources that are available, it's, it's awesome. I'm like, yeah. wow, that was totally not that way. <laughs> right. I was young, man, you know? I do, I remember like getting guitar magazines and having the little record in the back. You, did you ever see those? And you you could uh, you put it on your record player or whatever, and or they come with a cassette. Yeah, yeah. And you just has like a little lesson in it. Just, I don't know. It's just a different time, man. But totally. all of it is good. Yeah, that's the thing. Like it, you know, back then you had to fight for it, and now you still have to fight for it in a different way. But it's still you got to do the work. You got to sit down and practice and practice and practice. I agree, man. It's and it's it's. Forever, you know. That's the yeah. great part about it, man. It's you know, it's awesome now. I get to see my daughter do it, so it's, it's kind of reignited me. And uh, you know, because you, sometimes you get far away from your initial love for for music, and especially when you're making you living, you're living at it. So it's it's good to I always say, man. I always try to maintain uh, my life as a fan of music and my my right. just pure enjoyment of it you know because it yeah. can get really like dicey when you're you know you're trying to figure out how to how to live playing music man it's it's tricky sometimes you know definitely definitely it's it's just i so i have an eight-year-old son and uh, he wanted to play guitar i'm like dude i already play guitar like let's let's start something else so he's doing piano lessons and every day he's like dad i wrote a song and like, he's super, super beginner. So he's just, you know, in middle C position trying to work it out, but yep. he's coming up with melodies that sound cool to him. And I'm like, you got it. The second you're taking it and using it to create, you're a lifer. It's in you. I agree, I agree, man, it's forever. <laughs> Very cool. That's awesome. Um, what was, uh, so starting back at the beginning then, what was like the first uh, record or first concert or both that like, you're like, whoa, this, this is it. Oh man, one of the first really big concerts that, that 
really floored me was Rush, man. I, I think I saw them in 90, 89 or 90, 91, someplace around there. It might have been 89. And I, as a kid, gone to different concerts, you know, but that one really kind of, it's like, wow, that was incredible. <laughs> yeah, Rush and will then, do that. <laughs> yeah. And then later, I, um, my sister took me to see a show. I'm pretty sure I was underage at the time. I always tell the story, but I'm, I'm thinking back, I'm pretty sure I was. <laughs> but we went and saw a testament uh, at, uh, at the Omni in uh, Oakland. I grew up in the Bay Area. And it really, I think it was then, I was about 13 or 14 when I was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely, that's, I'm doing this, man. This is it. That's what I want to do. I can't, you know just kind of took over, you know, because it was a small club. It was so loud, so powerful, and just, you know. Uh, there's fun to what's over there. Omni, the stone, is it? The stone, yeah. yeah. We were just talking about the other day, me and my sister. We, uh, you know, it's, it's weird, man. You go on, on YouTube or anything and kind of go down the, the rabbit hole, and I think about some of those bands I grew up really listening to and uh, some of those places, you know, Stone, Omni, Berkeley Square, all those places up in the Bay that, I don't know, it's a special time, and uh, it's a special area, you know, for music. So it's, totally. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, I first started doing gigs late 90s and then into the 2000s, and there was still in, you know, New York, you could still play CBGBs, these these other rooms yeah. that are like, you know, they're gone now, and, and you know. It's heartbreaking, bro. <laughs> it, it's, it's like, and then kids will come in, and they're like, you play what? And I'm like, yeah, but like in the moment, it didn't feel like, crazy it was just that that was you played there that was a spot and you know well yeah that's very a different, cool. different time and yeah but i think that you know the live thing is 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 monument you know what i mean to play yeah. music live going and seeing bands and artists and it's man it's all part of the interaction of music i think it's huge man you know completely yeah completely. that's why this thing is so strange you know i know that you have to adjust and I'm even finding myself having to adjust like to other ways, you know, utilizing social media and figuring out different things to do. And uh, but really, man, playing live is nothing like it, you know. Totally. And like it, I, I feel like, you know, bands that are on the cusp of something big happening now to be frozen or, or like, you know, you were probably about to go out for a pretty big tour support and a huge record that got pushed back. And now I saw it's coming out at the end of this month, but that messed up everything that, you know, yeah. Or froze everything. Bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. It's very bizarre, man. And it's hard know, to know I... what's happened, sir. Oh, I said, yeah, man, I, you know, it, it'll come back around with, you know, obviously we don't know when, but right. Now uh, that, I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, something I definitely miss, you know, at all. All this is going to a show and playing a show, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like party body's been cut out. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So let's see here. Um. Your favorite piece of gear? Hmm. I have so many now. You know, I, I think. Uh, think I have things for different reasons. You know what I mean? Uh, guitar wise. A few I really like. My my friend Josh Williams made a um, a three three five. It's called a Mockingbird. I really love. Uh, I got a number of sectors that I really really love. I like their this uh, this Ultra three. It's like for some reason, and I was talking to my friend Adam about it. It's it's probably not their most you know famous or well made one. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. But it, to me, it just something about it I love, and it just it's, so connected, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Um, and then I got—I don't know—I got other other things that I, that I really like. You know, of course, I love pedals. So it's just a shit yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I just started you know? messing with the uh, the fractal, the uh, FM3, which oh, is like yeah, a small. Uh, it's insane. It, it's like because <laughs> I, I could never get into modelers because I like to tweak and touch things on the fly. And then yeah. I stumbled upon one of these and I was like, let's see where it, and it feels like an amp. Like I can't describe it any differently. Yeah. Like it's crazy. I know it's crazy, man. The technology and what you, what you're able to do now is really uh, amazing. And I try not to shy away from it. I know that's the tendency of a lot of people, you know, when 
I don't know. You you know, my favorite records weren't made with this stuff, but that doesn't right. really matter. Now, I think at the end of the day, you you have to, part of music has been the the cooperation with technology and, and the acceptance of it. You know, sure. So I'm I'm full, I'm fully into using all those things, man. I use the campers. I use the the um, I just got the. Uh, a couple of things, the sir head and the rev head, and they, they're both in employ, like, you know, IDR, like, you know. Um, oh, like that, uh, the Pete Thorne, he has that one with the uh, the IRs. Yeah, I yeah. Killer, bro. It's so really? good, man. And the, the, the rev one is killer. Yeah, it's cool, man. I think it's, it's, it's very cool, you know. It's, all these things have their place, you know. It, it's a different world. I was literally this afternoon, that's why I have it set up there. I was, using, I was A, being what the, the Fractal called, you know, their Fender Deluxe, and then a real Fender Deluxe. And I was going back and forth with the Strat, with Silver Sky, with the, with the humbucker guitar, and it, it, I couldn't tell the difference. And that, that was very, kind of scary almost. Yeah, it's trippy, man. And you know, live, we use, we use the, the Kemper, so it, it's, you know, I'm, I've always used amps, you know, my entire life. And um, I feel like, with in ears and no monitors on stage and things like that, man. I, by the time it gets to my ears, by the time it gets to the front of the house, you know, it's it's just it's hard to tell the difference at this point, right? In my mind, you know. It's cool though. That's it. It's, it's the same everywhere you go. You don't have to worry. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. Dude. It makes a fly gig like a fly putting a fly rig together is way easier. I mean, I, back in the day, you you didn't know what you would get, you know. You show up, there'd be like a rental company, and you just don't have any idea what you're gonna get. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a crate. Like I requested a Marshall. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I do think it's a great thing. Very cool, man. Um, all right, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna dig into your my my research on you. I actually, so I was Guitar World or Guitar Player. There was an awesome article about you uh, a couple months back, and I was like, holy crap, this guy's done it all. And that's incredible. Like, what? How? What was the first gig that led to the next gig? Like, what's what's the storyline of that? Um, you know, I came, I came to LA uh, around 2000, somewhere around there, and uh, I was I came to be a part of a band called Fourth Avenue Jones. We had, a, you know, I had a deal on Interscope, the whole deal. Um, just really working hard doing that, doing supporting tours. And then um, they kind of just didn't work out. A lot of things like that didn't work out. So uh, I, at the time, though, to make a living, I was, you know, obviously doing gigs and just always playing, man. That's that's always kind of been the thing that I, I stick to, just constantly play, play everywhere. No gigs too big, too small, whatever. You know what I mean? Just that kind yeah. of mentality. So uh, I eventually started working for uh jessica simpson around 2001 or two and that was kind of my first big pop type professional Hi. pop type gig you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i don't know i think that from there i met so many people and kind of started to understand the idea of of uh being a side man playing for people it was it's it was a great experience honestly man i'm still in like best friends with a lot of people that from that, you know, from that band, you know. Wow. And I realized then that, okay, I don't know anything about Jessica Simpson's music, music bro. I am no idea. So I, I'm playing, and then I realized that all, any gig, any of those things that you do, it's really about your interaction with the other musicians. And that's how I remember everything I've ever done, really, is who was playing and how, you know, awesome or cool they were or, like, the whole bonding friendship of, of of the situation is based around that my memory is based around that you know what i mean right. yeah so it's um it's pretty interesting i think it's i don't know if a lot like the general public you know kind of understands that they go see their favorite artists like ariana grande or something but man the guys playing are incredible yeah. like they're like some of my best friends and they're just like mind-blowing dude how good they are you know what i mean yeah completely so, it's very, um, it's very cool to kind of be around and see it, and you know. I remember when, when I was 
starting to like pick up some steam with music. I have a sister who's four years younger than me. So while I was into like Corn and Limp Bizkit and all those late nineties, new metal bands, she was into Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears and all the dudes in my band would like rag on me for saying that music's okay. And I'm like, dude, I would love to be the guitar player with this stuff. Cause the music's fun. And listen, like if you listen to like uh, back, oh, what's the song? Uh, d- d- Larger Than Life, Backstreet Boys. Like yeah. I've done that in, in my cover band, we've done that song and it's a fucking fun song to play. So like, <laughs> I think it's the coolest gig in the world. And I'm like a metal guy, but it doesn't matter. Like it's fun. And if the band is fun, that's it, right? Yeah, man. I'm I'm for all of it, man. That's what I, I had a conversation the other day, and I and I was like, man, you know, I, what I've tried to do is not close myself off to anything. You know, I think like, I I did that gig for a little while, the Backstreet thing, and the same type of thing. I don't know, I didn't know any of their music really until I got there, and then when I got there, I was like, oh man, this stuff is killing. These songs are written really well. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like produced really well, and it's. It, it, you know, it's it's kind of eye open. You gotta let yourself be open to all that stuff. Right. Music is so vast and so large, man. I, and uh, yeah, man, that, that's why I kind of enjoy doing everything. I don't. Nah, man, a, a gig is a gig. I think it's super cool. Like in in my world and and the people that I try and influence through teaching, like you represent the epitome of it because you're just a dude doing all these different kinds of music. Your original stuff is its own thing, but then you can jump to these different things and it just seems like the most fun, I don't know, it, it's passionate fans, it's people having a great time. I'm sure standing on the stage looking out, it is heart stopping. Yeah, you know, I've, I've definitely had some 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 moments that I, uh, super surreal, you know. Yeah. So I think that's that's definitely one of the, the, the parts of being able to do things like that, you know, it's, it's surreal, man. I, I've, feel very fortunate for sure dude like it's crazy <laughs> awesome dude yeah it's uh the last tour i did was like 2011 i played with this band diecast which is like a boston based uh hardcore kind of band yeah yeah heavy heavy music and i finished that and i had a kid and i said i don't know if i can do this anymore so i started playing in a cover band and we were playing tons of pop stuff and disco stuff and and funk stuff and ironically, and I'm not saying this because I'm talking to you, it's just part of the true life story. We, a um, bunch of my bandmates came to see us play and they walk in as we're playing Bad Romance. <laughs> and I'm having, I'm, I'm ripping a giant solo where it doesn't belong. I'm having a great time. Dance floor is full, people are dancing. And all these hardcore metal guys were like, I get it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all this stuff is so much closer related than, than, you know, we let on, you know, I, it's hard. Uh, I remember telling somebody it's hard to be a purist nowadays, you know, and that's right. metal, jazz, anything like I, I just can't be a purist. man. I can't hold on to these ideas that nothing outside can influence me, you know, or that there's a, you know, this is good or bad. Like, I, you know, it's all just expression. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm totally I buy into the idea of being open as possible and just enjoying it all, dude. There's, you know, some you don't like, it's not for you. You know, that's right. That's cool too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's strange, man. I, Cause I definitely came up with the, uh, around jazz guys too. And that's can be a, a handicap in a way to where you're, you, you don't allow yourself to see the value of other things. You know, there's so much value in other styles of music and just, man, let the, the other thing go and just like, right. have fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I totally hear it, man. So Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears, Rihanna, Janet Jackson, Backstreet Boys, American Idol. That's a sick resume. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> how, yeah. how does one gig, does like one, when the gig is done, the contract is over and then you have to audition for something different? Like what's, how's that world work? Um. In, in like a lot of different ways, you know, but I, I think the core of it really is, is relationships, you know, friendships that, and uh, they're all genuine relationships and friendships I've made through the years where, you know, one person will be on this and say, hey man, would you be interested in doing this? It's like, yeah, for sure, you know, 
So I think it, for me, it's kind of happened that way. But I know it's, it's you know, I've auditioned for things at times. Um, at one point, I, I auditioned for the Idol TV show, and I was just, I think that, I forget what was happening at the time, but it was so early that I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was so hungover. <laughs> <that> I, <came laughs> in, I don't know, I don't remember really, it was awful. Years later, um, I get the opportunity to, to do it for real, and I'm like ready at this time, you know? And so it's, I don't know, it's really how those things work, you know, but I, at the end of the day, it's all relationships and, and friendships and things like that, that you build over time for sure, you know. Do you get to, like, like you've been doing the Lady Gaga gig for quite some time now, do you have creative freedom to stretch something or is it super rehearsed and what you're going to do is the same every time? No, I think it's, um, it's, it's, you know, a combination with her, with that, that type of situation. There's so many moving parts, dancers, you know, lights, all kinds of stuff, you know, robots, all kinds of stuff going on. So, <laughs> yeah, the songs are definitely, you know, we're on click and we've got, you know, uh, sequences and different things we're playing with. And uh, so it is pretty locked in. You know, you find your moments to add things if it's, if it's necessary, you know what I mean? Or if you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like mm -hmm. a uh, filling out type of thing. You know, we generally with that band, we, we stay pretty locked into playing the parts, just digging as hard as you can on the parts, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. With, with that particular gig, like, is it when one touring cycle ends and then she goes back in the studio, um, are you part of that process or you just get the call when it's time to gig uh -huh. again? I have good. been at different points, you know. Uh, we played on a number of the songs of Star is Born. And, uh, wow. I played on a lot of the art pop stuff. But it just depends on, on the situation at the time, you know, and everybody's availability and then what direction uh, an artist goes, what, what producer they work with, you know. It's kind of like, like that, generally. But, uh, awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm just lucky to be a part of, of, of something like that for sure, man. It's and the band is outrageous, you know. Like the, all the guys, and I've known them for so long. And just the way we play together is very uh, it's just intuitive. It's just locked. It's like we're just we, you know. I, I play with my uh, friend Ricky, and he's mm -hmm. just. I think we play together so well because we are both just really listening and kind of aware of kind of aware of what he's gonna do, and I'm not gonna step on him. He, you know, it's like it's kind of like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he does a lot of Instagram live stuff recently. I've been jumping on oh, some music in there. It's prolific. Dude, it's amazing, man. Yeah, he's <laughs> amazing, man. I've, and we have a couple, you know, we have a band together. So it's, you know, you just, I, I think throughout life, man, I've, I've gotten a chance to play with a lot of people. There's certain people you really immediately connect to musically. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, sure. it's crazy. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain that necessarily. I think we like a lot of the same things and we kind of know what uh, what we expect of each other in a way and it's just unsaid, you know what I mean? This happens. So I, I don't know. I feel really lucky to, to be a part of that for sure too, man. Awesome, dude. What up, Denise? What up, Denise? <laughs> um, so the band Knives, that's your band with Ricky and then the bass player who's escaping me at the moment. I apologize. Johnny Good, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. was that like you guys just were jamming at sound check and songs happened or you had a batch they had like what was that? Was uh, that you know, I'm always writing and, and, and um and producing just about as much as I play guitar, you know. And uh it was around 2013-14 we're on art pop I think. And me and Ricky are, were just always playing man, writing. We just decided let's 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 do it, man. Let's can let's make a a band, and, you know, let's do it. Basically, it was that simple, you know. And I had my friend uh, Jay, who's the singer. I just started sending him kind of like the basic outlines of songs we were doing. And then when I got back home, I came in, I recorded all his vocals, and we put everything together. And uh, yeah, it's pretty organic, man. Like, but strange in the way that it's not us in one room doing it. You know, we recorded a bunch of shit in hotel rooms on the bus 
you know, through email and at the time, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a, uh, it's kind of a weird way to do it, but it's, I don't think there was any wrong or right way at this point now. You know yeah, I mean? totally, man. It's however it works. Definitely. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend is a singer. We do all of our music together. And uh, we write with the guy in Utah. We write with the guy in Sweden. Like, just yeah. various drop boxes set up, and we're just swapping stems and just letting it ride. So I get it. It's awesome, man. Strange the way you can do things now, right? It's um, it's the future. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so I'm looking at some of the questions here. I see uh, we got uh, Hanan's in there. Hanan Rubenstein from What's up, brother? Yeah, yeah. We had him like what, what four weeks ago. So cool. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, he's awesome, bro. Like, yeah. Mark, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incredible player. Yeah, I was. He's just been putting these videos online, like little lessons, and I'm like, I've been watching them. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> what a cool perspective, man. It's cool, and his tone is outrageous. Yeah, man, killer. I'm definitely a fan. Um, what's this? I'm seeing this question. Someone says, so how did you connect with Lady Gaga? Someone's asking that once. Um, I uh, what up, Daddy? I um, man, you know, I think it was like 2000. Ten or eleven, my friend. I have a good friend of mine. His name is Joe Wilson. We call him Flip. He's a genius musician. He was her music director at the time, and uh, he just hit me up. Honestly, man, said, "Would you be interested in doing this? Um, if you are, come down." And obviously, we got to talk. And uh, had to do like a little video at their rehearsal. And uh, from there, man, we I just started rehearsal with him, and we then we went and did the Born This Way Ball. Uh, but I know a few of the guys. I know Ricky already, and I have met uh, uh, Brock and Spanky. I kind of known all of them already, you know. So it's a pretty easy, um, it's an easy thing to settle into, almost right away. And yeah, it was good, man. You know, and he, Joe was awesome. I had met him randomly, um, probably five or six years before, and we always always stayed in contact. And didn't, you know, various things together throughout the years. Um, right. But yeah, that's pretty much how that, that came about. Very cool. I, one of the other people we were talking to at the beginning, um, like about a month and a half ago, you know, I asked a similar question. How'd you get the gig? What was the process? Um, and he's like, be on time, know your stuff, don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah that's a lot of you know i think that's general general human that's a life skill <laughs> really yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like anything i think it's weird man like i don't know with with music man i definitely i definitely like take it serious so it's i think that's easy for me in a way because it's it's uh, it's a very serious thing it's, although it's fun and i'm i'm uh you know, I'm all for the fun, man. But it is like a, at the end of the day, something we all take very, very seriously. Sure. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, That's something we, you know, we try and instill in a lot of the people who come through our school, you know, practice makes perfect. You got to put in the time. Like, what's your you know, practice routine? Like, what, you know? At this point, man, a lot of my practicing is just, just kind of working, you know, like playing, right. writing, um, recording, and, uh, just playing as much as possible. I almost look at it like, like the, the, like cooking in a way, man. Like I'm, if I was a chef, I just, be, I, I cook all the time, you know? So that's how I kind of do it. If I'm a fighter, I'm training all the time. It's just something innately that I do. I'm just playing music pretty much all the time. And uh, yeah. And I'm, you know, like I said with my daughter, I see her do it all the time now too, man. I, we have her room set up like a studio. So it, I come in here and she's just in here for hours recording. Great. Practicing, learning, and um, yeah, it's. I think that's the main thing to do, man. As far as practices, you have to. I think just the, the depends on what level or what stage you are, but I think it's. It's um, you have to be on your instrument or be in, involved in some kind of musical activity. I think every day for sure. I mean, at least I do. You know, that's how I. Feel. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. That's. Yeah. Agree entirely. Um, I always say to the kids, 
kids. They're all, I, I refer to, it's ironic because I'm 37, right? So I have students that are seven and I have students that are 67. I call every one of them kids. It's just <laughs> in my mind, it's just how it works. Um, you know, if you're holding instrument and doing something, you're practicing. I don't care yeah. if you're not practicing the minor scale, you're doing something, you're, you're, you're bonding with it. For sure, I agree, man. Um, all right, so I got a. Well, this is one of the. This is a longer question, so I have to read it. I got my, my paper here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, one of the things we do is we put our, our students into bands. We, we do have like a band. You know how how to book your own gig, how to set up the PA, how to. You know, the, the business side of things. And a lot of the people, it's their first time playing in front of people. So anxiety and nerves are a big factor. And honestly, you know, sometimes people who have been playing forever, anxiety and nerves are a factor. Um, yeah. How do you process those type of feelings, you know, when it's the Super Bowl or Madison Square Garden or something like that, and it's just an unfathomable amount of people? Do you have tips for coping with that kind of stuff? Or has it gotten easier? Yeah, I think for me, it's... Um... I don't know, man. I think if I had to go talk at the Super Bowl or go to, like speak, you know, present, make a presentation at like someplace, I'd be way more nervous. Right. I do feel very natural with uh, with guitar. You know what I mean? Like with music. I think it is. I think that's my coping mechanism, man. I'm just I'm just into what I'm doing at the moment, and obviously there are nerves involved, uh, but. It's not like a um, debilitating thing. It is not something that stops me in my tracks, really. You know, I, I think it's kind of I, I kind of turn it into excitement because I feel like Smart. I'm excited to do those things. You know, yeah. but I, I think that comes from, like you said, it's spending a lot of time with your instrument, it's spending a lot of time with music. I think you get the chance to share it, and it's it's exciting, man. It's exhilarating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Awesome. But, but I will say, like, smaller things are more nerve-wracking to me. I think the bigger the place, the more the disconnect in a way from, in terms of people, in a way. But if it's kind of like a smaller, more intimate setting, that's a little more, you know, nerve-wracking. I can <laughs> see every little thing going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Totally, man. Um, so then tying into the bigger gigs and, and just uh, touring, life on the road, like, you know, you have a daughter, you, you know, how, how does being away for months at a time or weeks at a time, like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's hard. I, mean, I have a daughter and a son. My son okay. is 12, my daughter's 16. And I, um, you know, that's been the hardest part of it all, honestly, man. You know, I feel like very fortunate to, to, to do what I get to do, man. It's a, it's, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a blessing and you got to feel fortunate to be able to do it. That's, you know, there's dudes like around the world killing me you know what i mean it's just a it's just a fact so you gotta i'm very thankful but i'm also like you know that's been the 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 toughest part for sure man being away from from the family is and is i don't think there's really any solution in, in, in as far as that goes if you're gonna tour and you're gonna go out and play music it's it's um that's just one of the things man you gotta figure out how to how to manage it or how to deal with it or, or, or transition to something. You know, I think that at this point in my life, I'm, I'm figuring out how to transition, honestly, man. I'm, I'm, I just don't see myself going out for large amounts of time anymore, you know. And that's what I'm definitely working on. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a trip, definitely, man. I was talking to a couple of friends of mine on, on this topic, and they were saying how this, you know, the, the COVID and everything, um, it, it's – changing how gigs are going to be and what the next chapter in all of this could change for musicians, for entertainers significantly yeah. the way all this is done. And, you know, I got a couple of friends there. They're like, they're closer to night than day, you know, on their way towards the end of their careers. And, and they're yeah. like, I, I don't want to deal with this shit anymore. Like I'm totally cool with sitting at home and finding other things to do. So it's,
going to be different. And then definitely, you know, being smart enough to say, okay, I'm going to pivot. Let's figure out what the next chapter yeah. brings. Yeah, yeah, man. That's, you know, it's, I think it's always in my mind. It's always been in my mind, you know, it's what you value and what you hold dear. You know, I, obviously music is, is huge in my life, man. But, you know, my kids are, they, that trumps music all day. You know? Of course. Yeah. So, but I've, I've, uh, I've been able to provide for them uh, playing music. So that's, it's, that's the give and take. You know, I, I, I remember I told my dad at one time, like, man, I don't, this was 10 years ago. I was like, I don't think I'm a to tour anymore. He's like, well, you got to find something else. Dude. Right. <laughs> you can't just like jump ship, you know, without like you play music. And that's part right. of life. Just figure out how to balance it and what, you know, don't be gone for four years at a time. Just figure out ways to do it. You know, it's, but it's tricky, man. It, I, I don't have any other answers, but it's very, very tricky. And it's, you know, it's something I don't have any like solid answers for. <laughs> You know That's I mean? okay, man. No, I appreciate yeah. the honesty with that. I mean, I, it's the kind of question it, it's, it, it's the one person who asked that question when he told me the question, I said, dude, there's not going to be an easy answer for that. You know, let's, let's practice a little bit more. So you may have that opportunity one day before I bog these guys down <laughs> with this unanswerable question. You know, it's like rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> no, I get it. Man, it's all good. Um, all right. A question unrelated to music for a moment. Um, has any book, or if you're not a, a, some people aren't book people, so maybe a movie or something outside of music, like shaped you. Yeah, man. Um, man, it's, it's, it's uh, I think both, I think all mediums of art, you know what I mean? I think right. literature, movies, all that. I've, uh, I definitely have like a couple favorite movies for odd reasons <laughs> i don't know why you know what i'm saying i don't know but I, as, as far as a book man i can i know recently i, I just started reading this book about uh it's like atomic habits okay. and, um, like it's it's something i just started reading but it's really really interesting kind of uh opening my mind up to being like active and continually like trying to evolve and, and learn and apply that to music, but it really applied to life too, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, as far as movies, man, I'm trying to think about movies. Man, there's so many. Yeah. Jeez, man. I'll come back to that. I'll think of a good okay, one. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> the book is good. That's, again, a lot of these questions, man, it's like at any other moment, it all, it's like, oh yeah, that. Like I always, when people come in, I'm like, tell me your top five favorite bands. And people are like, Ugh. I'm like, it could change a second from now. Just tell me right now so I can decide how I'm going to teach you. Because yeah. if you just stare at me for a half an hour, I can't really work with that. <laughs> yeah, that's hard, man. Like anything's like that. I can barely remember anything. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I get it a hundred percent. I do some of the same stuff every single day of my life just because that's how my life is structured. Yet still, there's reminders in my phone to make sure I do them, even though it's like, <laughs> you know, should be second nature, but no. Yeah. It's yeah. too much going on. Uh, what else we got here? Um, okay, Desert Island. One guitar, one amp, one pedal. Whoa, that's a tough one, too. <laughs> uh, I think I would take a, uh, a telly to, just to, you know, I'll take a telly. I mean, I'll be general with it. I'll take a telly um, and probably take um, hmm, maybe like a like a maybe like a Princeton or something and or like maybe like a yeah and then pedal. Shoot, if I'm away, I think I just try to take like a real trippy delay pedal. Just does all kinds yeah. of weird stuff. Shit. All <laughs> those are the right answers. Now. <laughs> I got plenty of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> Good answers. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So um, something outside of music again. Um, yeah. Sure. Outside of music, or, do you have any like escapes, like? Music. is your job, right? So you're always writing or producing, recording or performing. Rehearsing. Do you have uh, a hobby or collect something or anything else that your thing outside of this epic thing? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, cook a lot. I really spend most of my time outside of music with my kids, you know, hang with them. Um, that's the majority. But honestly, the majority of my time outside is, is really just with my kids, you know, awesome. cooking, hanging out, you know, doing that type of thing. I started to get back on the skateboard and I realized, oh man, I could, Definitely too old at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh, my son got a skate without falling. <laughs> it, it, and when you fall, it's harder to get back up. Yeah, yeah. But, I didn't even get to that point. I was already hurting. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. My son got we got him a skateboard for Christmas, and uh, I was like, you yeah, know, I messed around a little bit in high school. I, I could probably make this thing work, dude. The mm -hmm. second I get on it, whoop, bang. <laughs> I was like, and he's like, oh, dad, and I'm like, can't let him know I'm injured. I have to be Superman. So I'm like, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> I was not okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, so this is kind of like a musical question, but it's more like a life question. So the music business can be pretty cutthroat. Um, have you found people that you've known on the come up that have been supportive or trying to impede your success? Meaning like, as you were gaining notoriety and stuff, friends that you knew from maybe childhood or, or along the way that didn't climb the ladder in the way you did for various reasons or, or you know, what, what's that experience like? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think anything you do uh, in whatever it is, like any realm, it involves people, you know? So I think, uh, and that's the good and bad of people, you know, there's, I have great, friendships and people have supported me in the, through the years and encouraged me and helped me and continue to do so, you know? And then obviously you have the element of, uh, uh, I don't know, man, just like you're catching people at a weird time in life when they're not happy for you, you know what right. I mean? And, you know, I used to get upset about all of those type of things and then at some point, I just realized, okay, well, that's just, you know, that's them, that's them, that's them. That has nothing to do with me, you know? So I just hope for them to come out of that type of, that type of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, I don't know, that, that, that approach, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Just like that's, that's especially music, man. Music is very weird because you, we all wear our hearts on our sleeves, man. We're sharing our art we, yeah. in our rooms. For eight hours, we come out and we're sharing. It's very personal, and I get it, man. And it is very competitive too. Even if you say it's not, it is, you know. And I, it's uh, you gotta you gotta be happy for others and and let let people be happy for you too, you know. Obviously, but then the ones that are definitely not, I think you have to just be aware of where they're coming from and kind of let it go. You know what I mean? Right. That's not, that's not an easy pill to swallow. It took me a long time, honestly with that because <laughs> yeah. it's it's a it's a trippy thing man i can imagine yeah um do you do you have a favorite song in the set list that you like to do is there like a moment where you get to stretch out a bit or the crowd responds or uh with gaga yeah okay yeah uh, um man i don't know which one would be my favorite the Man, Bad Romance is, is pretty fun. There's a, uh, I don't know, there's quite a few that are, that are, I really like playing, you know, that, cause that show is a bit different. It's kind of, it's kind of like a rock show in a way. You kind of mm -hmm. just go all out, man, you know, full, full power stance, full power chords. Totally, you know? yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's fun, man. I think the whole show is fun. It's, it arcs really well. You know? I, I saw her in, Jesus, 2011. I won tickets off the Z100 pop station in New York here. And my son's mother was pregnant at the time. So he was in her belly. And I was like, this is still when I was metal Rob. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, it totally dead on. It felt like a rock show. Um, I, there was a Jesus Christ was the lead guitar player at the time. Yeah, in New York. 
That's the yeah. homie, man. He's he's killer, dude. He had this silver burst sparkly last ball and it was yeah. slung so low. And she's screaming his name and cursing. I'm like, this this is a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely has that element. It's weird. It's like there's rock and rolls, dance, pop, it's like industrial. It's yeah. like a lot of different things happening. But this it's fun, man. I, um yeah, it's definitely a good time for sure. Yeah. Can imagine. Yeah, definitely. So what's uh, what's next? What's next for you over the next couple of months? Any cool projects? Anything cool coming up? Yeah, man. I um, well, at the point at, the, at this point right now, I've been doing American Idol for the last uh, three or four weeks. We got Ooh. more, one or two more weeks left, and uh, that's a pretty um, it's pretty different now because we do it all remotely. So, so how does that work? Uh, record everything. Um, and then, so so we have like a like this week, uh, like today basically. I gotta when we get done, I gotta finish uh, recording all my parts. Uh, usually nice. takes like a day or two, sometimes more. We've done like I think in one week we did like forty songs recording. Wow! And that, a couple of days of just man, just getting in and trying to you know do your best, and, and it's, it's because it's all kinds of music, man. That's it's incredibly uh, challenging, and uh, but it's very fulfilling at the same time, you know, it's really cool to be a part of something like this and that, yeah, everybody's recording remotely and it all comes together and it's amazing, man. I'm super, uh, super lucky to be doing that. So yeah, so it's, that's for another week or two. And then, um, working on a new band called Damaged Goods with my partner, Johnny Good. You know, we got about seven, eight songs being mixed right now. We're almost done. And yeah, I'm super excited about it. Cool. Yeah. Just doing that. And, Man, like I said, it's playing, hanging out, basically same stuff. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But I say, apart from playing live, I, I was me and my friend were joking. We're, we're like, man, the the uh, quarantine thing is like, man, I'm, I think I was already basically quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, yeah, like I said, apart from playing live, the majority of my time is in one place, at one, you know, for hours. So, it's uh. It's very similar to what I do now. <laughs> no, I guess that's good, though. So it wasn't too big of a change, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was, you know, I'm, I'm upset we don't get to go do these shows and, you know, but it's all right. You know, you just adjust. You have to. That's the. I was listening to uh, <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk and he was saying, like, if we all come out of this and no one that you love got sick and died, you're OK. Yeah. That That's. You know, it's so black and white, but true. Yeah, man. And I'm, you know, I'm definitely praying for everybody that's, that's dealing with it and, and all the people on the front lines, of course. So it's, yeah. it's a weird time, man. I've been telling my daughter, like, man, this is just, I, I don't know how to approach it because I definitely didn't experience, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. My yeah. parents haven't. Like, it's just a weird time, you know. But um, I think we're, we're all doing our best to get through it and adjust. That's sure. what it is, man. Those, uh, we just did, uh, in April, we did a, a contest. We had people, uh, you know, tagging on our social media, doctors, nurses, uh, frontline, you know, workers, and we were just giving them free guitars and free month packages of lessons. That's and awesome. They could, they could do them online. They can do them when we open up again, however they wanted it. But just to give them some kind of an escape because it's so scary, man. And, like, even, like, we had two students um, – their parents are both police officers in, in the New York city and they caught it. And like the dad was like in really bad shape. And it's like, you don't realize like there's people out there who can't lock themselves away the way we can. And they have to go yeah. out and it's terrifying. It is man. It is bro. It's very strange. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then okay, I'll sure. down because they shut us down at the, Made the mistake the first two times of babbling through the hour mark and then the thing cuts. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I know I asked about uh, guitars and other gear. Is there any, like, um, pedals or anything like that that you're, like, got your eye on or something that, like, wow, this is going to be the next big thing? Man, I don't know. I think, man, I, man that thing has taken off in the last, it's what? 10 to 15 years, I don't know, how, when that changed, you know? I don't, I, know, I don't know, it's just a whole other world. <laughs> yeah. 
Because <laughs> yeah. when I was coming, up is like you had a boss or a DOD or like, you know what I'm saying? There was like yeah. two or three pedals. Right. There was a couple of options. Now it's like insane, the yep. amount of things and how good they are and how amazing, you know, uh, the, it's, it's crazy, man. But I, I, you know, I have a few friends that like Beatronics, the stuff they're putting out is insane, dude. Like it's crazy. Oh. There's my daughter, you changed your name? <laughs> my daughter new metal girl <laughs> hi uh, um but yeah man it's i think the beatronic stuff is awesome there's a uh, i don't know there's so many dude vertex there's just so many like things i'm excited about as far as pedals it's it's really interesting because they each do something that's that's uh unique you know i kind of stopped really? looking at everything as um uh, i think it, as, as a someone who's spent a lot of time gigging you're always looking for something that's kind of like a swiss army knife type thing Sure. But now I have them kind of compartmentalized to where, okay, this could work for all. lot of situations and then this, this i can never use anywhere but it's so fun because it just right. out of control you know what i mean yes so it's kind of i kind of looking at pedals and gear in that way now like what's kind of to spark some inspiration and fun and what is for like this type of specifically for this type of thing you know what i mean right yeah and i mean there's, what, there's i'm addicted to gear but probably the most when it comes to pedals I spent a long time playing in bands where there was no keyboard player. So my responsibility was to make all the noises. Um, yeah, man. And that just, that never left me. I just ordered, um, I think it's Chase Bliss Audio, they might oh, be bro. called, but they have this, it's called the blooper yeah. pedal. And oh yeah. my gosh, it has all these little dip switches. And, and I'm just, it was like, it was like $500 pedal. It's not, you know, a toy at all, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall into a hole and no one is going to see me for five days and I'm just going to be messing with this thing. Yeah. They, man, they're making incredible stuff. Very good. Like their, stuff is, their stuff is insane. Yeah. You got to tell me how that goes, man. Yeah, I'm going to throw a video up when I get it. They just, I just got the tracking information this morning. So I was like, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Well, yeah, I'm the same, man. I, I geek out on those things because I think they're – Oh, that's the fun part about playing, man. It's it's, it's gear, dude. It's, yeah. I, I think like, non-musicians, especially not guitars. Yeah. No. 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 What's the right number of guitars? One more than the one I have right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I I was coming up. I had like a partial endorsement thing with Gibson in late two thousands, and somehow that parlayed into. A PRS thing that's in my wall behind me yeah, yeah, and they've yeah. been so incredible to me over the years but still I need other things <laughs> and then it, well then I need the strat and I need this amp and I need this this and it's just it's just it's a problem I agree man it's just, it's crazy <laughs> I don't think it's ever gonna change though no no that's okay actually being <laughs> locked inside makes that worse because now I'm like on reverb like I set in my mind something and I'm like, okay, well, if I can find this under this amount, I have to buy it because at worst case scenario, yeah. I can just flip it and break even. And then it's just a, yeah. a nightmare. I like lock myself yeah. in the bathroom until, you know, two o'clock in the morning, I go in the bathroom, lock the door and I'm just buying stuff. My girlfriend's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. Dinner didn't agree yeah. with me. <laughs> That's funny, man. I love that. <laughs> All right, brother. That's Thank you fun. so, so much for your time. I will say goodbye before they cut us. But, um, I, I will. This will be up here for 24 hours. Everyone wants to check it out. And um, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I got it, man. Thank you, brother. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll see you. I look forward to your posts. You too, brother. All right, man. All right. Take it Later. Peace.